When author and atheist leader Chris Steadman fell out of faith, he was a teenager trying to make sense of how cruel human history has been. He found little reassurance in Christian ideas. I just couldn't believe that the only people who had sort of figured this out and gotten this right were Christians. Stedman became a sort of agnostic non-believer, a secular humanist. Today, he works to build the kind of spiritual community among secular people that he found so nourishing in faith spaces. As an atheist, he's a public figure, appearing on programs like The Bill O'Reilly Show. You know, I want to hear from atheists, what do we believe in? What do we stand for? What are our highest values? Rather, right, than, rather than alienating 82% you know, yeah. of the population, which sees you guys as cheap-shotting them. But when he took on this role and subjected himself to an audience, he learned something about atheists. Some of them were as controlling and intolerant as the most doctrinaire Christians he'd encountered. Over the internet, they criticized his message, they felt he was soft on religion, and they harassed him about personal things. After his appearance on O'Reilly, he says, The majority of the negative feedback that I got, both from Fox viewers and even from some atheists, was either overtly sort of homophobic or had um, homophobic undertones. The experience drove him to take a step back. And Stedman's not alone in drawing the ire of online atheists. It turns out that the atheism subreddit, an open forum on the website Reddit, is ranked the third most bigoted and toxic of all the website's forums, behind one that's dedicated to sexual strategy and another about a racist radio show. Someone created the Ten Commandments of the atheism subreddit, and they don't scream humility. Thou shalt remember thy sense of superiority and keep it holy. Thou shalt be relentlessly offended and confused by the very concept of religion. Thou shalt conflate religion and extremism because it's less complicated that way. Thou shalt spread the joyous gospel of old creepy Christians getting caught with child porn and other fun stuff. And it goes on. In this light, it can be easier to see what religious people mean when they insist faith is the ultimate act of humility. Peter Wenner is a Christian and an opinion contributor for the New York Times. He writes, quote, at the core of Christian doctrine is the belief that we have fallen short, that our loves are disordered and our lives sometimes a mess, and therefore we are in need of grace. The mark of genuine humility is not self-abasement as much as self-forgetting, which in turn allows us to take an intense interest in the lives of others. Comparing that to this... His eminence is claiming to know more than a primate can possibly know, and he's showing that he knows much less than most primates probably should. For me, it recasts Chris Stedman's story of deconversion. So then when you were challenging your religiousness and kind of coming to this identity, was that a humility or was that the opposite? Um, it was probably some of both. I mean, certainty is seductive. I think that there was a part of me when I was younger and going through a lot of um, big transitions and challenges in life around my family and my sexual orientation. His parents were getting divorced, and he was realizing he wasn't straight. I wanted some feeling of security in that, and I found that in these very sort of rigid answers that I got in an evangelical Christian space. Stedman's evangelical ties didn't last too long, in large part because of his sexuality. But counterintuitively, maybe, it was a religious institution that helped him come out as queer. He found an LGBT community in a Lutheran church. Those progressive Christian churches uh, were kind of the place where I could go to find sort of radical acceptance. And in grad school, when he came to terms with his non-belief, it was his Lutheran professors that supported him. And actually really sort of pushed me to, you know, what they wanted was for me to have an honest reckoning with what I believed and to pursue my questions, my doubts, my inquiries. All of this is just to say that humility and openness and their opposites, they abound in religious and secular spaces alike. For Stedman, his circumstances of fear and insecurity, they made him defensive about disagreement. I sort of felt like I needed to really prove to someone why my beliefs were right, and in order to do that, I needed to prove why their beliefs were wrong. As he's emerged from that insecurity, it's made it possible to disagree without being disagreeable. So counterintuitively, humility was made possible by a kind of assurance. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Liza Veal.